A high level update has finally come for us everybody. We have the official time frame release for Halo Infinite. We have an update on the graphics as Craig's getting a makeover, some multiplayer updates as well as customization updates, some coding system info. We finally have the reveal of what you get for reaching 152 in Halo 5 and Joseph Staten's reaction to playing the campaign and a whole lot more. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure you tap subscribe to the channel guys to keep yourselves up to date with all the content happening with Halo. And if you like these kind of informational videos, make sure to tap that like button as it greatly helped out the video and channel. So let's get right into it. And so it was teased, it was foretold, the high level update for Halo Infinite. Some actual genuine news coming from 343 has finally dropped for us guys. Well, I've read through the entire update and I've gone through every little part and I want to bring out the TLDR of everything you need to know about this update. I will be releasing some additional videos talking about this update afterwards in greater detail, but this is kind of more the everything you need to know kind of video. But let's get right into it. So there are two main parts to this update. There is talks about the graphics and art style. That's kind of the first section of this. And then the second section is about multiplayer, customization, player engagement. So let's jump into the first half talking about the art style and graphical improvements that Halo Infinite has experienced and a little bit of a talk about what was kind of the current status of Halo Infinite going into that demo reveal. I sit down with the concept artist and art director from 343, Nicholas Bavier, or also known as Sparth. They also talked down with Neil Harrison, who's the director of art management, and also Ani Astri, development manager for the graphics team at Halo Infinite. We so first going to just talking about what they've been doing since the announcement of the delay. And they pretty much said right here that the team has been heads down working on everything from lighting to fog to wear and tear on fire and armor and just multiple aspects of the visuals presentation of Halo Infinite. I mentioned some of the key aspects that they changed here. And I quote here saying that the some of the key areas of progress include better quality of global illumination, ambient occlusion, shadows, volumetric lighting, sky, and atmosphere. We have also addressed the issue of our GPU-driven rendering and texturing streaming solution that should mitigate the LOD popping and texture quality issues that were prevalent in the July demo. Now it's great they heard they've made improvements on this because that was one of the biggest issues was the lighting on this game because you can see like with the difference between being in bright lighting compared to shadowed that the shadows really doled out all the detail where in bright lighting you really got a chance to see the detail in the armor and weapon models and everything else in between. Now yeah this is kind of a given but it's good to know that they've said they directly made improvements on exactly where we had our issues with this demo. They even mentioned Craig. Yes, Craig makes an appearance in this development update and quoted here saying, firstly, I can confirm that the facial animations on NPCs was not fully implemented in that build, which resulted in Craig's incredibly deadpan, lifeless look. That's a huge improvement right there, because that's one thing I definitely noticed after watching the trailer multiple times was just how plain faced most of the NPC bad guys that you fight against are. You know, they're fighting for their lives. Like Craig is literally getting punched to death and he's just like, Bruh. Adding on to the additions of the facial animations, they do mention here about adding some hairdos and beards when it comes to these brutes as well. It's another big complaint that they looked rather smooth. Traditionally, we know our brutes as being much more like gorilla-like, especially like in Halo 2, and also even in Halo 3, you had like goatees, different hairstyles that kind of distinguish out different types of brutes, where this one it was all just clean shaven, just like not looking like a brute that we've traditionally known. Another change I really hope they make is having the armor coloring look a little bit more dull. They were very vibrant red, which I feel like kind of made it look a little bit more cartoony than something that you'd see like in an actual battle. Now a lot of what they're talking about kind of falls in line with a previous leak, which saying from Clobril saying that nothing in Halo Infinite is absolute. That a lot of it can be subject to change and a lot of it can be updated to meet players' needs, and it sounds like they're doing just that on the graphical side of things. Now, improving the lighting, you know, the ambient occlusion, shadowing, vol volumetric lighting is gonna be an absolutely huge difference when it comes to this game. I thought that extra wise, the game actually looked pretty good, just that the lighting really wasn't well done to make it really pop out and stand out and kind of show this detail in a proper, well, 
fighting per to pardon the pun. But yes, Craig is getting a makeover. He's not gonna be the same Craig that you've seen in July's demo reveal. He's gonna be looking a little more spruced up in the final release. And in the second half of this development update, they sat down with the live team to talk about Halo Infinite's customization and player engagement when it comes to the multiplayer side of things. Unishek sits down with Ryan Paradis, who is the design director for the live team, as well as Chris Blom, who is the lead progression designer. And right off in the introductions of these people, he met Chris Blom mentions specifically here saying, I also lead the team that controls how things are unlocked that via challenge or leveling. They don't mention anything about loot boxes, about how to unlock things. In fact, they actually mentioned one phrase, particularly multiple times within this segment. They repeated this multiple times saying, no loot boxes, no randomness or items that influence the sandbox or gameplay. Now this is actually a little bit different than what we heard from Chris Lee previously in the, saying that there are no paid loot boxes. This is just straight up no loot boxes in the game whatsoever. So this is a new tidbit of information when it comes to the development of Halo Infinite, which is great. Less loot boxes, I think is better. Putting a better emphasis on direct paid items when it comes to cosmetics, I think is a better option to go when it comes to microtransactions within Halo Infinite, which they do touch on a little bit as well. The team talks about how they're actually putting together a long-term roadmap for Halo Infinite saying, what should players look forward to for to each season, which this is the first time we've actually heard any kind of confirmation, at least to my memory, of seasons being in Halo Infinite. Now this is kind of assumed, but I think this also plays into the other rumor that there was gonna be a battle pass when it comes to Halo Infinite, much like we have with the uh, with MCC. We'll probably have the same thing with Halo Infinite, but this one will probably be a paid season pass they'll most likely have. And it seems like they've had a big emphasis on the, what they call the premium content or premium purchases, or I think it's gonna be kind of more external stuff that you can pay for if you would like, but there's gonna be other ways to unlock customization and different items within Halo Infinite through playing the game mainly. Dating here specifically saying, being free to play does mean that there will be some premium cosmetics, but players will still obtain tons of customization content through things like playing the campaign, challenges, skill, special events, legacy rewards such as the 152 reward for Halo 5, and the progress system and more. And talking about 152 and Halo 5, we've known this is gonna be a thing for about two years now, and we finally have it revealed for you guys to check out what you're gonna be getting in Halo Infinite for hitting max rank in Halo 5. You get the Watchdog armor coating, which looks pretty freaking awesome. It's super clean, like a white, black, and red kind of look to it. It looks like it also has a weapon coating to go along with it. This is super clean. This is one nice looking armor coating. I might have to rework my streaming schedule to try to grind out 152 in Halo 5 because right now I'm currently at 149, which is about halfway to max rank. I'll also be making a video talking about if you can hit 152 in Halo 5 before the game's release. And they actually do mention the release date for Halo Infinite. Well, not specifically the date, but the time frame being it's going to be a fall 2021 release. This kind of goes against what we've been hearing in rumors and in leaks saying that a spring 2021 release, but this is kind of was the coin flip really of it. It was either gonna be a spring 2021 or fall 2021. And it sounds like for what the team is trying to accomplish and what it looks like what they're gonna be doing with this extended time frame, it's gonna be allowing them to accomplish everything that they want to with Halo Infinite and giving players a chance to play a little early as well. That's because they are planning to do the insider flighting later next year. So my guess would be sometime probably after E3, probably after June, we'll probably get a chance to play an early edition of Halo Infinite. Cross my fingers to get involved with that. I've been involved with every insider flight since Halo reach on PC so I'm hopefully to get involved with that the same way again guys we'll keep you guys locked in on this channel when it comes to any extra news or information on that definitely one hot topic that they had to discuss within this update is going to be the coding system within Halo Infinite as you do know it has removed the primary and secondary color options which a lot of fans were not too happy about now they still sound like they're holding strong and true to the armor coding system because they do say it allows them to implement more customization within the game saying that each item actually creates a smaller digital footprint so they can add more content to the game without it being such a massive patch like they had to do with Halo 5. And they did say they took community feedback. They have looked hard at how many codings 
are in the starting set and of what quality are unlocked via engagements and other systems, they said. Remember when they said that we're gonna have Halo Reach level of customization? Well, they weren't kidding, actually. They mentioned here exactly, it's in the have helmet, helmet attachments, chest gear, shoulder pads left and right, knee guards, wrist gear, and utility, as well as visor colors you can choose from. And this last little bit here is actually about Joseph Staten's experience playing the campaign for Halo Infinite. We do hear rumors that the game is content complete, and kind of from what we've read and mentioned within this blog update, they did say the word content complete a couple times within this, and right here, Joseph Staten says, I've played the entire Halo Infinite campaign twice. I was, in a word, stunned in the best possible way by what the team has done. Halo Infinite by far is the most expansive and vertical Halo world ever. Why did the team do this? Because they understand that wonder and freedom are key to the Halo experience. And we're talking about different kind of experiences, well, he actually mentions here specifically stuff that you can do within the campaign. Besides here saying, do I explore off the Golden Path, assault the banished war base guarding the Valley Pass, follow a flight of Forerunner Sentinels into an unexpected cavern, rescue a squad of Marines dug in and desperate halfway up a mountain, or do I keep rolling the main line story thread that feels epic and intimate at the exact same time? So I wanted to cram in as much information as possible, guys. We can go into other videos to go into more detail on specific topics that they mentioned within this blog update and also my personal opinions on things as well. But I just wanted to give you the news straight and forward, guys. So if you like these kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Check out the videos on the screen right here if you're missing any content from me recently. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.